Mate, we've done it. The last, it's kind of like day three of the championships maybe. Yeah, it's like the consolation prize. Unofficial. Yeah, definitely. But, mate, it's not, not just Sydney this weekend. There's bloody mate. group racing everywhere in Australia. Yeah. It's unbelievable. We did four states. That's unlike us. Could have done five. But we, we cho- gave that one a really wide berth. We chose not to. Um, yeah, so we did, obviously, the races at Randwick. We did the Quokka over in Perth. What else we do? There was a couple of listed races in Brisbane. Mornings and Cup Day as well. Good, which we've had success at in the past. We certainly have. So plenty to listen to, drifters, um, and plenty of reasons to have a play this weekend. Who would you do it with, mate? The good people at Ned's, mate. They are absolutely sensational. Team Orange through and through. Uh, they have the profiles at the moment, which we wouldn't have helped you last week, or I certainly wouldn't have. Um, but... You know, you can follow us on the tips that we give you out there. Go straight to the profile, puts you in your bet slip, and you can get on there. Hundred um, percent. Hopefully, we find you a few this weekend if you decide to follow us in. And you know what? If you don't want to look at the profiles on there, that's absolutely fine because they can cater to every other one of your needs anyway. Hundred percent. But what are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. I need to ask you a question. Be curious, Drifters. Mr. Brightside wins the mark and wins again. Bardozzi wins the Oaks for J Mac. The photo finish. Mr. Brightside or Romantic Warrior. The mayor's going great guns, fan girl. Look at the go, fan girl. Imperatrice has got her. And race gone by. Imperatrice by a leak. Overpass. More Bakers delight in Perth. Redina. Medina just won it, I'd say. Tom Kennan won the spring champion in a cakewalk. Without a fight, without a fight, won the Caulfield Cup. Well, I think we were saying, what, at worst, a soft six. And the races were co- last two races around we were called off. <sighs> wet, 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 wet. I haven't even done the times. Not going to bother. No, Completely no. Completely irrelevant. Completely irrelevant. Uh, those sort of meetings you can just put a line through for the most part, I think. Um yeah, it was a minefield out there for the jocks. Well, Randwick. Yeah, well, I think even it was getting to the stage where even the colours were irrelevant. You yeah. come back, they're all brown. Poo all, brown. All poo brown silks. Uh, yeah, a few, um, a few poo brown beards and moustaches. <laughs> yeah. nost- nostril hairs for the jockeys. Yeah, J Mac on broadsiding. Uh, it was like it was literally nowhere else on his face, just around here. Yeah, it's around the muzzle. Yeah. Same with Mickey D. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, a uh, very wet day, um, uh, a, a pretty met end to the Sydney Autumn Carnival, I think. Yeah, and thankfully they don't have a meeting there, I think they were saying on the broadcast, until late May. I think they kind of need that four or five weeks. Yes, they certainly do. Fresh turf place. Yes. Um, so let's get to the features then. Um, Broadsiding. Yeah, he was champagne. good. He was good. Um, the market loved him. He was, I think he opened about six or sevens with the good people at Ned's and jumped sub four bucks. So quick backup, obviously, you know, he must have thrived after that. Uh, you know, obviously loved the heavy deck. He's, he's, I think both his parents are European horses. So, you know, he's going to get through the wet. Coming from the back after a pretty sedate, sedate tempo, like you'd think he's one who can naturally progress as a, as a three-year-old uh, broadsiding. Yeah, yeah. Um, Reminded me a little bit of militarise, I guess. Uh, but obviously, he's not in that bracket yet. No, no. Um, just, just oh, I guess, on an upward spiral at the right time. And and you could say the same with um, uh, linebacker, who, who ran second. They, they're just, you know, they're, they're coming to the fore at the right time, whereas that golden slip of form, you know, those horses have been up for a long time. Yeah. And so they, and they, and they encounter a heavy deck like that. It's just... This is never going to work out. No, it didn't. Um, so he his first run was on the 25th of February, first career run. So, And that was a down at Ballarat, and we said this when we were watching it just before because uh, we are recording on the Saturday um, again. Um, but, yeah, they just – they could often do this better than anyone. They kind of tr- make sure their horses travel. Yeah. Uh, like they did it with Traffic Warden. They've done it with Animo early days. Um, they do it with all the good ones. Yeah, uh, and there was clearly a plan for for this guy to uh, to get him to the champagne on the quick backup. So, yeah, I, I guess you know I 
I liked him um, last week and, and backed him last week. The uh, reason why I took him on this week is because I liked linebacker and linebacker brained him um, the start prior. So, yeah, can't be too disappointed. No, no, you can't. Um, Manal just don't think she really appreciated that little really gluey heavy. Like this heavy today was completely different to the heavy on day one of the championships. Oh, completely different gravy. Yeah. Uh, that was a firming deck. This was, you know, yeah, gluey, muddy, sticky, gross. Well, it was soft five at the start of the day. And then, you know, re- uh, race one got retrospectively rated a heavy eight. So it's like when that happens, it's riding on the wall. It's like you and I shoulder arms. Yeah, you know? I, I, I had a few early bets. Um and yeah, certainly didn't decide to deposit any more money into my uh, into my Ned's account. That's for sure. Yes, um, magic time, all aged. Yeah, phenomenal. She's good. She's really good. Really good. Fourteen hundred meter horse through and through. Uh, would she have won that race if it was on a, a soft five or a soft six? Really hard to say. She handled the heavy going. Um, yeah, and oh, I thought she was a chance during the week. With with no idea that the deck was going to be that heavy, I thought she was a good chance, and um, she ran really well. She's she's a great horse. Yeah, she is. And her so her previous runs on heavy ground, she beat Parasol um, first up in the autumn. Oh, that was that um, must have been. What year are we? Yeah, first up in the autumn last year. Must twelve months ago. Yeah, beat yeah. Parasol and Lady Laguna and um. I think I must have been fourth or fifth there. Uh, Luke Pepper's horse, Opal Ridge. Opal Ridge, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I, was getting my, uh, I was getting confused. But then she yeah, regressed at the 1,400 metres to Alentia on the heavy, and then she ran, you know, only beating the length in the TJ on a heavy as well. So, um, yeah, she definitely, definitely got through it. <laughs> only one to quicken. Yeah, only one to quicken. Yeah. Uh- yeah, so again, like Sunshine in Paris, we were both on. She she ran a, a fourth, and and you made the point that she she got there on class. She did not like that deck yeah. at all. So you can't be again. You can't be disappointed. She's one who will, um, is so lightly raced that you know you you put her away and you bring her back for the spring. And and she, it would be surprised if it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if both those horses run on Everest Magic Time and Sunshine in Paris. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. And um, Espiona, I think um, there was a massive go on for Chain of Lightning because of the heavy ground and understandably so. Um, she was a little bit flat, I'd say, just didn't quicken. Like there's heavy form then there's that heavy. You know, that was a genuine heavy 10. And Espiona, both you and I, prior to the race, were like, there's no way she's finishing in the race here. No, no. Um, no, the heavy deck was just... Not ideal for her, and and I didn't even have her in my numbers. To be fair, during the week, like, I just didn't didn't like her, um, despite the flashing light in the TJ. Uh, we see it time and time again. Um, I don't. I think they pulled the wrong rein with Espiona. She should have been in that new market. Um, yeah, and she should have gone down the straight there. And I uh, said they took her to the Canterbury thirteen hundred. Uh, back to twelve hundred, up to fourteen. Uh, yeah, it's you know obviously Chris Waller didn't know that they were going to get this sort of deck, but oh, she, her, her prep gave me a, a little ick post yeah. post scratching from the new market. To be honest, yeah, yeah, I can I can understand that because like if I if I look through her profile here, um, she had that win at Sandown second up. Where every, that was when she was going really, really poorly, and that's the win that kind of like kickstarted her career again. Um, and I think you and I were like, okay, last last ever chance. They deliberately took her down to Melbourne to see if she could get back in the winner's circle. She absolutely did. Her second half form is really, really good. Um, like she beat second up in the spring. She absolutely dominated a tissue. Um, I beat her by two and a half lengths and we've seen what her tissue's done since. Like she's a genuine like group one mare. So as in second up, she would have been in the t- in the uh, new market. And- yeah. Like I feel like she always, r- she she runs well whenever she is in a prep, but I feel like second up's like her sweet spot. Yeah. So she's a, 
she's a horse that um, will, will no doubt win some races in the spring. But I, I just think with her going forward, if it's a Group One, um, I, I think she's only going to be a betting prospect for me if she's racing in Victoria on a on a on a Melbourne leg. She won't be. She'll be going to another Everest, I'd say. Yeah. Well, that's all. I can't have her then. Yeah. Can't have her. Yep. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, amenable friend of the podcast. He was phenomenal. So I and, did. And you, you might, yeah, the, I know you nearly won and you must be a little bit disappointed, but the, geez, that's, that's a great run and just sets him up for a, for a nice spring. You bring him up here, do you? Maybe. Stradbroke. I'll, I'll ask him, uh, some live on air, like DMing, but I was like, mate, that was a massive run. And this is Marcus Williams, who's in the ownership group. Mate, absolutely huge. Group one place getter. I'm only just winding down now, though. I thought we had it. Yeah. We thought you had yeah. it, too. It's like it took it took a lot for Magic Time to wear him down. Yeah. So, um, yeah, must be so stoked for that. Uh, friend of the podcast, Marcus Williams. Yeah, thought he was going to steal it. Surely you freshen him up and bring him up for... A strad break, he'd get in with no weight. We'll see. We, we'll see. Uh, private Eye was good. First up, uh, not first up, but his first run in four or five weeks. Yeah, he was good. Uh, Cheeky by J-Mac. Cheeky, bring Cheeky. it leading on him. Cheeky. Uh, what, what does Joe Pride do with Private Eye now? Spell him? He's only had the four runs. Freshen up. Strad break? He could yeah. win a strad break as a toppy. Yeah, he, he ran second behind Alligator Blood that year. Jeez, that was a form race. I reckon he was top weight that day. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So that was, that was the form race of the year. Yeah. That, that year and, and again last year. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, private eye, that's uh, another placing. Yeah. Uh, that, that strike rate's going down. <laughs> <laughs> so 33% of possibly, I don't know, like 32, 31 uh, his, his play strike rate's going up, though, 55%. Um, so he's run. So this is where, with Private Eye, right, I get where you're coming from, right? Because in a group one level, he's had 12 runs. And he, if you throw in two Everest there as well, so we basically call it 14 runs for one win. Uh, and then he's, what, come second and third in Everest, I think? Yeah. So basically, all right, one win. Three seconds and two thirds at group one level, but one from fourteen. Hey, I, it wasn't a terrible take. It it wasn't. It wasn't. But he's never been one of my private eye. No, not I, I've got nothing against him. I'm on and off with him. Yeah, I just, I don't know. Like, I it just he, he doesn't he doesn't he's put a field away like a couple times, but that's it. Yeah. In the yes, 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 or the Red Zell or whatever it was. Yeah, and what, nature whatever strip. the nature strip, and and one other time down the Flemington Strait, like brained him. Yeah, and that, absolutely brained him. And you know, there was a new market winner in there uh, with Rock and Horse, but like she was a hundred to one. Yeah, and where, where's she now? Well, to be fair though, she won a Dali as well. Yeah, at, a, at 20s. That was bizarre. Yeah, the Flemington Carnival. I tell you what, it's difficult. Very difficult. Southport Tycoon, uh, he was another one prior to the race. Like, if he runs well, he's a serious horse. He's still a good horse, but like, for a for a three year old colt, I just question. It's like pull up stumps. You know, it's a heavy ten. What's what's there to gain from this? Yeah, yeah. No, you're exactly right. Um, because they 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 know, he's still got his nuts. Say they jagged the group one this prep, and he just. All you're doing there is just giving him a gut buster. Yeah, I, I don't get it. So um, you'd 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 hope that the stable would come back and go, like, all right, we're targeting towards. I don't know. Do you go a Cox play for him or something? Golden Eagle. Yeah, Golden Eagle. Of course, I keep forgetting about that race. Golden Eagle. Um, yep. that's where he'll go. <laughs> yep. All right. Um. Okay. So if we have a look at earlier races on the program, then. Um. Connasana. Con- it was good. Yes, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Sneesby Racing will be buoyed by that result, uh, losing to those silks. Um, he's, they seem to get the better of him all the time. The Whoppet Bloodstock silks. Uh, but um, 
Yeah, good win. Obviously, love the deck. Uh, Scarlet Oak. She just she she looms like she was going to be the winner, but I think she's just oh. she lacks a bit of uh, race maturity. That was only a second ever start, but she's 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 a smart little filly. What I heard about her in the mounting yard is like. Oh, this isn't even a horse yet. This isn't even a race horse yet. Like, yeah. there's nothing of it. Like, so for her to, what she finished second or third? Second. Like on that ground, she's the one that you want to take out. Yeah. Of it. Like, if she started, like this wasn't an absolute mugs like field. You know, for her at her second start to start favorite against these, like that's a decent. Like the market obviously wanted to be with her. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, kind of sign her like. I could see why it was like Ritro's Ruffy on Channel 7, for instance, because she ran fourth in the Ethereal. Like that's got Autumn Angel and Tropical Squall form. Tropical that's, Squall? That's the best three-year-old Philly form going around. Yeah. So, yeah, I get it. I get it, Ritro. He's not an idiot, Ritro. No. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Now, there was a bit of a siren going in race four, protest, mm. and the always the bridesmaid becomes the bride, Kintyre. Yes. Or always the Always the groomsman, now the now the groom. Yes. Um, yeah, Gary Portelli, I wonder how many weddings he's been to. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of his two-year-olds. Because <laughs> he can't fuck it up. And <clears throat> like we're talking about it, Kamachi, Kintyre, and NCAP, three nonnies. Massive nonnies. Oh, we'll have to go through with the rest of his stable at, at one point, but uh, Dan Hauser. <laughs> oh, yeah, not J Max best, I feel. No. Like from Barry three, fully expected him to be like the rail in run was the best place to be. And if you were constantly out wide, I think it just took it out of the horses by what, it, um, by what I could see on the broadcast. And then he tipped him out wide. It's like, it's almost like because in, I think in the race, after that, he was on an Australia bloodstock horse. Uh, I think it was two races after that in the Quato uh, race. So he was on New Energy. And it's almost like he was just testing it. It's like, all right, what is it like when it's really out wide? Just in case I need to go there later. That's what it seemed like. Yeah. Uh, so he's – anyway, but he's – I'm sure he's giving it – giving the horses all their possible best chance to win, but it wasn't his best steer. No. No, it wasn't disappointing. And Tannhausen now, it's like, oh. Well, you don't, you never bet on him again. No. Like, I could see that horse coming up here and racing against the second at Port C, you know? Yeah. He's still got his nuts, Tannhauser. I don't think no. that'll be the case for much longer. I don't think so. Um, so, uh, do you think the protest was fair enough? You said 50 50. I, I agree with that. Like, yeah. I've, I've seen them overturned, I've seen them upheld. Yep. Yeah. Our guy, Marzu. <laughs> as soon as it got that heavy and like oh. I was initially keen on Valana and then I was like, oh, what about front page? And and so I was like, just go go with your gut, um, Valana. And then, I, and then I see Marzu rolling around in the bloody, in the bloody mounting yard. I was like, he's going to come out and fucking win this. <laughs> he's going to come out and fucking win. And he just loomed up, and you just knew as soon as he as soon as he eyeballed front page, like J Carr, oh, like, he just knew. And Jamie said after the race, he's like, "Oh, tell you what, he does a lot wrong. He's not a he's not a straightforward horse to ride." And which is funny because he basically what she said was he hit the front and he just stopped. And he's like, he looked at the winning post. He was looking at the crowd. Just like he's forgot, he forgot, he's literally forgotten how to win. Is Marzu the dumbest horse in Australia? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is he the dumbest horse in Australia? Maybe. <laughs> I reckon he's he's like um, he's like uh, a few of our mates who just like look back on their high school glory of the sporting days because <laughs> he did. He put six to, he put six in a row, mate. You have to be yeah. a really good horse to do that. Yeah, like he won an Arrowfield. He won a Doom in ten thousand. Yeah. Like from starting in a benchmark eighty four that prep, yeah. Like he's a he's a really really good horse, and your boys were on for every single start, <laughs> literally every single start. Um, <laughs> so, so prior to this, right, he had twenty five career starts for seven wins. So that, <laughs> so we were on six of six, and I reckon we jumped off every start since. <laughs> 
We didn't get out of the casino with Marzu. We R and P'd the casino. Yeah. And and then, and then and then they were like trying to offer us like, you know, free meals and um and yeah. a free a few free goes to come back into the casino. And we uh, said, no, no, we're, no good. we're okay. No, okay. I, don't, I don't need to come back here. Um But I tell you what, that's yeah. What what it tells me is if there's ever, ever a bottomless deck, irrespective of the price Marzo is, irrespective of the sort of form he's in, just yeah, just have a, have a throw at the stumps. Have to, because like that heavy eight in the TJ, I've I'm kind of not I'm not rating it a heavy eight because like yeah, it's not like a the heavy that we've sent that we've been Man, used the ground, to. The ground wasn't being torn up and flying no, everywhere yeah, like, like it was today. It was yeah. insane today and. Front front page like two dollars like you know he was the sources on top selection because he was so sensational first up but like weren't, was not anticipating a heavy heavy eight heavy nine deck so no. um, Valana was he was good Af Cabin was good but they just don't have the wet class of Marzu <laughs> no <laughs> no he's um he's a bloody rubber ducky Marzu yeah he's a rubber what. ducky. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Um, now, Huerta, Nash, one of his best, back up on the rail. Just, he, mate, he was last and he just was like, oh, do you guys, are you forgetting that the best ground's on the rail here? Just went Nash, zoom, zoom. Nash has got that in him. Uh, he's so hot. Uh, Huerta, could he go three Doombin Cups in a row? Could. Well, who's going to verse him? Like, there's no one that springs to mind. No, absolutely no one springs to mind. Uh, that was Goldman first up. So, and he was running second there. Like, and if it's like a firm, I reckon he's better. Oh, can't really say that now because he's looking at his profile. He's one on heavy, he's one two or two on soft. Um, yeah, Goldman. Maybe. Anyone coming out of the um, the Queen Elizabeth or the uh, or the Doncaster who had a bit of a fresh uh, up and come up for it? Kovalika. Kovalika potentially, yeah. But then he'd be like six, six up or so. Yeah, fifth up. Um, maybe someone from like I don't know anyone from like the Mornington Cup, like Gear Up or something. Yeah, someone like a Gear Up could. Yeah, but what about Kintyre? Yeah, I think if there's a three year old there, actually, what's the second of Portsea doing? True. True. Shouldn't be the worst. I should be sixty to one, but ten houses is not in the race. <laughs> if he was in, if he was in the race, he'd be the worst. Faulkner Park, like back on top of the ground. I said if that horse would have any lick of rain, he wouldn't be running, or he'd be nowhere near it, and he scratched. So he's been better this prep. So maybe he goes towards it. Annabelle Nisham loves the Brisbane Carnival. She does. She's R and P'd before. She might R and P again. What's New Marion doing? I don't know. Hmm. He won a Q22 in the first edition yeah. at that's, 20s. That's what I mean. Like, who's who's coming up here? Is there well, is there even a market? Let's have a look. Yeah, Huerta. Well, he was $14, $12 or so. He might even go around by himself, Huerta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, mate. Why would, you, why would there be a market no, up now? There's a market up for the Stradbury Handicap, though. I guess who's yeah. favourite of that? Uh oh yeah, AJ. Um <clears throat> I think um Team Green only just went out with their markets today. So I'd say if we we're doing this podcast tomorrow, there might be yep. some markets for us to talk about. But you know, that's the way it's what happens on the big job sometimes. It is what it is, but uh no, full credit to Marzu. Yep, love to see it. Um and Huerta. Any any highlights from from Mornington? From Mornington, um, no. <laughs> Apart from see what I see, yeah, she's a she's a smarty. I think she's a. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like you know, um, hype train t- sort of guy to be like, oh, she's a cox plate horse because no, no but no, she's not. But she's a she's a black type stakes yeah. level horse, and and she's she's just getting better and better. Like you, you can only put away who's in front of you, and and each of her wins has been really smart. So um, yeah, she, she's good. Good to see. Very well done on and off the track by Danny O'Brien, I might say. Unbelievable from Danny O'Brien. Yeah. Like, he can win his on and off the field. Oh, honestly, like, um, 
I looked at him and I was like, yeah, you probably <laughs> you probably average about thirty five with a bat, I reckon. And um, and then I, I checked I checked his <laughs> statistics and fifty five. <laughs> How are you batting that far above your average? <laughs> um, I thought Gates for the team nose role for Moody Coleman uh, could potentially come to Queensland for a for a derby. It could be a derby type Gates, yep. um, which is the derby's only Group Two up here, isn't it? No, it's Group One. Okay. Um, but yeah, out of Frankel, so. You know, you know, run it. Oh, Frankel horses do anything. Exactly. <laughs> Literally. Regally bred. Um, see what I see was fantastic. Um, Nature Strip was running for second there. Yep. Desperado. Esty Fenny. <laughs> At 30. <laughs> Hungarian form. <laughs> Hungry kids of Hungary. Uh, um, yeah. So we were saying it straight after. It's like first immortal, $5, like equal favorite there or thereabouts. And. Had the flashing run over the mile first up. Oh, he's just gonna he's just gonna be there in a Melbourne Cup again this year. It's like, well, for, for starters, he didn't even make the field last year. Um, one horse only once that that run was in the sixteenth of March, over the mile, and you'd be hoping to see a few more subsequent winners than what there were. Um, but yeah, only the one. Yeah, first immortal. Um, don't know what they do with him. Probably pull up stumps and reassess. Well, I'm sure there's a win and you're in race soon for him. Um, like there's typically one around this time, isn't there? Like a Bar Cummings or whatever. Like if I look at this, not Bar Cummings, but, you know, there's those yeah. sort of races. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I didn't. I didn't. I ended up backing a bloody Kiwi thing. So I'm an idiot. Um, that ran a good, probably last or second last. But uh, yeah, that if you watch that replay of him last start, yeah, he he couldn't build into his gears, and and you know he, he wasn't given every chance. But he was also probably just disappointing. Yeah. So that's two really disappointing runs in a row. So jury's out on him. Jury is out. Definitely is. And then Mahaba wants the. Wins the Hariba. Um, As the favourite. Which we were shocked by. Yeah. Just put his nose roll in front. Graham Begg had a good day. He did. Had a great day. Phenomenal day. He's got a small stable. He does does really well with the Graham Begg. Like he's a he's a trainer who, you know, if I could have one with him, I'd be stoked. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I want a mare with him though. Yeah. Definitely. He just, he knows how to get the feel he's like. In good good shape. Hey, Magic Time, that was only an 11th career start. Yeah. Two group six, ones. Six wins, two group ones. Uh, very smart horse. Yeah. Very smart. Yeah. Um, shattered that the Inferno couldn't get his nose in front. <laughs> shattered. <laughs> that would be the last time. I thought it was going to just be a nice little love affair like the last time. Give him a big kiss. Thanks, the Inferno. Wasn't meant to be. No, he'll... um. I don't know where he'll be running around next, but he could probably win a Goodwood. That's how, um, <laughs> you know, that's probably exactly where he's going. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. Uh, no markets for the Goodwood. No markets for the Goodwood. Are there markets for the Sangster and the? Uh, There's a market for the Sangster. So the Sangster in seven days. All right. Let me guess. Estriella. With the good people at Ned's, will be sub $3. I reckon she'll be $2.60. $2.80. Okay. Uh, Second favorite would be Benedetta. Benedetta will be $6. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, Zapateo will be $8.50. $9. There's one in between those. Is there? Yeah. On speed, Kieran Ma. On speed, Kieran Ma. Ran in the William Reed last year. Where um, it's cool and got to come out of retirement. I me, oh, of course, I me. What's she? Six fifty. Six fifty. Okay. All right, and then honestly, mate, you don't need to do anything else. <laughs> Roots is heading there at fifteen dollars. Is she? She okay. was she good. Was good. good but start. I thought she was more of a miler personally. Yep. Yep, I think so. Hmm. You know what she she could be? Tastiara horse. 
Well, she ran second last year. Yeah. At 20s yeah. behind uh, Polisa Pan. Yep. Um, so. Runner in the Stradbroke. Tastiara. Yeah. Hypothetical. Nah, not 1,200 meters. Um, looking down the list here. Gummy, gummy, gumdrops is $81. Gummy, gummy, gumdrops. Um, I, I, I got out of the casino with her once and and I should have gone back in for one more spin of the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> it was at the scene of the crime, but, but I didn't. Yeah. Hey, it's always always best to like kind of shoulder arms. Like I feel like Zapato is a bit of a forgotten horse there. She's very hours. she's very good. Yeah. And I feel like she she was the firmer last year in the races. I well. think she might have even jumped favourite. Yeah. Who won that last year? Raw Raw Merchant. Yeah, weird. Oh, that annoyed me because you know who ran? She ran what third or fourth in the f- flight or whatever that is. Um, you know who's in the market for this now as well as learning to fly. So maybe that's why learning to fly has been scratched mm. a couple times. She's eleven bucks. Good value, and the Oaks as well. Um, no idea about that market. I'm well, Coco Sun would be favourite. Well, Wings of Song. And then Coco Sun. Yeah. Coco Sun's 11 bucks. Oh. Uh, Quickster, Concello, Concello. Uh, Wings of Son has, has been RMPing Tasmania yeah. and came up. And it's like, oh, actually, Morphville's easier to RMP at. <laughs> <laughs> Bit too hard in Tassie. Let's go RMP in Morphville. Of course. Of course. <laughs> A million dollars for this piece of shit race. Are you kidding me? A uh, million bucks. A million bucks could completely transform the economy up here. Yeah. You know who is only a length away from Autumn Angel and his $15 is Molly Nickers, the stable to mate. Mm. Big I, cross. I'd have to re-watch her run behind Wings of Song um, to have a firm opinion about her, but Coco Sun was very good too. She was good. Yeah. Um, I'm looking down here like Sarah Sun has been average – Dolphin Skin's a stupid name. Um, she ran today. It was Ross. Yeah. Okay. The Archer. Straight Ace is 260. RNT, so listener of ours, is in the ownership. So they have an Archer runner. Third favorite, eight bucks. I wouldn't have picked that. <laughs> Would not have picked that. Um, like Master Jamie's $15. A shiny sniper who's been sniping left and right this prep. There's a couple of sni- uh, smart Mashani's. Mashani Lily's a little smarty. I think Mashani sniper might be the. He's got the most runs on the board. I think. He's thirteen bucks. I would like to see the Mashani's get one. Yeah, because it's just funny. Yeah, the straight ace has been inconsistent this prep. I want to see one day. I want to see a Mashani stakes, and it's just Mashani horses. That's what I want to see. Like yeah. this nearly happened naturally without there being a specific. Well, it's happened plenty of times in the two-year-old races and there's been one other horse in there and the other horse yeah, wins. Yeah, they've wrecked it. Yeah, they've wrecked it. Get out. It's the only Mashani <laughs> only race. <laughs> All right. Um, Quokka is yet to go. In half an hour. Is. Half an hour. So stiff shit. Uh, we're not. I reckon it was a fantastic run for, by King of Sparta. I reckon he just got him late. Yep. Um Blake Shin, he's an absolute genius. Yeah, um, and then photo finish, uh, they reviewed the footage and it's actually a dead heat with AJ. Okay. Um, Frosty, uh, Froggy, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ribbit and uh, hops and uh, gets 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 the filly home. And she, she she technically goes one better than what she did last year, but she has to share the prize money with, with the king. Okay. Yep. Mate, honestly, Blake Shin is a... F- Genius, mate. He's had two winners there already. Yeah, he's going into the quokka. He's phenomenal. He's so good. No wonder he was overseas. Yeah. It's a pleasure to have him back. It is. He's very good. Um, Yeah, we were saying, it's like, imagine Bella Nipotina in that all age. She, go, she goes very close to winning that. Oh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's neck and neck with Magic Time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... Commiserations for the Kieran Mar stable and the uh, connections there, but you know you might win the Quokka, but no, nah, she'll run third or fourth in the Quokka. That's what she does. Okay, so what we're realising here, and this is the last thing we'll say on this podcast, 
It's a private eye. Basically, 14 starts at um, Group 1 that level when you include the Everest for one win and a few placings. Bella Nipotina. 19 starts at Group 1 level for one win, four seconds and two, two-thirds. Yeah. Mate, we're, we're right about these horses. When I say one can run on, like, I'm not saying it because it hasn't happened before. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a body of work. Like I'm thunderstruck. May he rest in peace. Yeah, chief. I'm chief. I'm running on a bit, officer. <laughs> and and the, and the one time that I was on him was the one time he won. Makai Bediva. Yeah, hell of a win. Great win. Golden Eagle. He was good in that. He was good. I wasn't on him though. I was. Yeah. Uh, but he was three dots fifty. Like the price was gone. Yep. You know. And for a horse like that, and that's where. For Bella, I feel like you can kind of kind of cop it to an extent because, you know, she's still only striking at 5% at group one level mm. and she she runs at about like a, a uh, an 8 to 10% price. Yeah. yeah. Like 12 to 10 bucks. Yeah, she's never favorite. No. Yeah. And we, but when she did win the group one, she was smashed into about four bucks. <laughs> she flew that day. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, Paul Laley's just... All, all all crimes are forgiven. I got my revenge <laughs> <laughs> with Paul Ailey. You I did. got my revenge. One of the best wins I've had. <laughs> it's un- enormous. He was like $15. I know. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Big uh, balls, Benny, eh? Oh, Paul Ailey. He's a good looking horse. He's doing his best work down south. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lonro passed away as well. Yes, he did. Uh, I flash. I think it was one of your old man's favourite horses, right? Yes, he certainly was. Yep. Yeah. I think a lot of people's. Yeah, the people's champ. Yeah, he was. 11 group ones. Never won a Cox Plate, Lonro, but uh, <clears throat> absolutely gorgeous. Um, father of Piero. Father of Piero. Um, so, you know, the, the bloodline lives on very strongly. Yeah, now it's like $10 million sort of stuff. Yeah, it is. It so. is. He's a uh, granddaddy, granddaddy of of, uh, of Winx's daughter. Yeah. Maybe. So he's, he's Slumro is catching up with his son Piero. It's like you managed to nail Winx. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tough man. <laughs> yeah. uh, you'd be nowhere without me. <laughs> um, Guess where yeah. he gets his good looks from? Yeah, true, oh. true. Mm. Yeah, mate, that horse is going to be something else. That yeah. filly. Sure um, yeah, incredible Australia Cup. 2004, best win you'd ever oh, ever see. Don't best, know, he, co- best call at, uh, of all time. He rallied like three or four times. Like he was yeah. gone three or four times. Yeah. And as soon horse. as um, Greg Miles said, go long, the crowd screams, go long, road, go, you actually hear the crowd lift. Yeah. That's the best thing about that call. Yeah. It's like the crowd's reaction is so good. Um, but may he rest in peace, 25 years. Good knock. Great knock. And yep. champion, champion horse, champion sire. The and perfect race horse. And he's been spreading his legacy right across the <laughs> he, really, lines. he really has. <laughs> credit credit to him. He had yeah. a great life. Yeah, he did. He did uh, half his luck. All right. <laughs> see you Wednesday, Drifters. I'll see you Wednesday.